What is up, my little tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash newmot for all your magic card needs. I'm trying out a new microphone here, so, um, well, hopefully the sound is good. Had an audio file work with me to get the sound settings correct, so let me know if um, I speak directly into your brain holes. But anyways... We are back for some more Arena Cube action here. And uh, we got some good stuff ahead of us. I'm feeling in a rather red mood, and I think the Bone Crusher Giant here is the best pick one, pack one in this pack anyways. So, I think I'm going to take this Bone Crusher Giant as the best card in the pack, but then heavily lean into rocking some people with red cards, because I feel like burning and turning and... Uh, Getting whatever garbage pack this is. Ooh, what is the best card in this pack? I don't even know. I'm going to guess it's probably like... Plunder or something? Maybe Bouncer? One of these alchemy cards? Like I said, I'm feeling in a kind of a red mood. I'm going to second pick this Play With Fire. Don't try this at home, kids. Um, Because, I, again, I kind of want to just... Burn down and smack down really quickly. Kill people on, like, turn six. And do stuff very, very fast, you know? Sometimes you gotta play fast. Follow it up with a Siege Gang Commander. The thing about Siege Gang Commander is I don't like it as a five drop. In fact, I don't like playing many five drops in my red deck. If I'm gonna play a five drop, it better be, like, Goldspan, Dragon, or Glorybringer. And this one, it is not. But this pack is another... Pretty weak pack overall, so. You know what we're doing right now? We're aboshing. I think abosh is one of the few companions that isn't in the cube, but... Actually, how many of the compa companions are in the cube? Yorian's in the cube, Lutri, Luris are in the cube, Karuga's in the cube. How many other companions are there? I don't even remember now. Zerda's in... Zerda? Oh, Zerda might not be in this cube. Yeah, Zerda, Abosh. What other companions are there? Oh, okay. Maybe not all of them, but Abosh is, at least from what I rec recollect, not in the available cards. Oh, no. I'm trying to force Mono Red, and they're giving me a fourth pick, literally one of the best cards in the cube. Shouldered the Apocalypse. Okay. I might have to instead go into a red-black route. This card, again, top five, top ten cards in the cube, and I don't think that's particularly close. This is a top card in Vintage Cube, so you have to imagine in Arena Cube it's going to be just as nutty, if not more, right? Wow. Some things, man. Okay. Well, this is where I'm leaning towards now. Something more akin to this. There are a lot of black-red fixers in the cube. Dual lands, that is to say. You got your Canyon Sloughs, your Dragon Skull Summits, your Blood Crypts, your um, Black Cleave Cliffs, what else? Then you have, like, the Tri-lands that add red-black overlap. This is the second or third video I've recorded today, and uh, they've all been extremely, extremely good. Um, we're going to take a Blood Tithe Harvester now here over Drown, over Light Up a Stage. Now, oh, this is good. I said I was feeling mono red, but you know what? Maybe we can add a little bit of black to that red. Earlier on stream, I had a very similar looking red-black deck. It didn't have um, Siege Gang, but it had Shoulder Red, Bone Crusher, Blood Tithe Harvester, and it was just a beating. These type of decks can perform extremely well, especially if you have the cards like Shouldred, cards like Bone Crusher Giant that just accrue a lot of value by themselves. I mean, look at creatures. Look at these creatures I have. If any of them resolve, they're going to get some amount of value. Maybe I guess Shouldred is actually the only one that doesn't immediately get value until they take their turn, but... Creatures are crazy. Removal is not as good as it used to be. Because of that fact, power creep, what they call it, as we get a nice Legion War boss here for our sixth pick. Frenzy would be another good one. I'm expecting 
I'm expecting to do pretty well with this deck. Um, and that's only six picks in now. As I was mentioning, there are a lot of red-black fixers in the cube, but I'm going to have to prioritize them. Oh, there's Karuga. That's another companion, of course. Let's take the push here over the Fabled, Pasha uh, Fabled Passage. A duel I would take. Passage I'm not as interested in. Gutter Bones. Fanatical Firebrand is all right. I like the Gutter Bones here instead. Somebody in my chat earlier uh, was saying that Fanatical Firebrand actually has the highest game in hand win rate of any uh, red card. Which, it kind of makes sense, but it also is like, what? The Firebrand does? Anyways. Let's see, that is not red-black fixing. We have a big score here that we're probably not going to play versus an extinction event that we're definitely not playing. Could take, like, Drowned Catacomb or God the Shrine in case we wanted to splash, but I don't think we're planning on doing that. No Priest here over Vindictive Flame Stoker on the wheel now that we're deciding to play a little bit of black. Savai Triome. I don't like playing the Tap Lands, but if I can't get other fixing, then that's going to be an important pickup. And Crypt Breaker is a nice one, too. All right, that was a good pack one for, well... What was trying to initially be mono red, but now is playing a lot of black because black feels very open here. Um, yeah. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah. You can't pull off as many combos with like draw seven effects in the arena cube as you can with vintage cube. But again, that doesn't stop this card from being any better. Ellis Ilkor. Haven't seen anybody play black white in this format. You would think like the Mardu colors have some aristocraty sacrifice theme, but that really isn't active in this cube. As we get a Kind of a weak black red pack. Best card being a Sigardian Evangel here. I guess we could technically take and try to play black white. Could also just take like Rabbit Battery or Bastion of Remem uh, Remembrance, wouldn't be terrible. This doesn't just trigger on token or non tokens. This just says whenever a creature control dies, it drains for one. That's not terrible. Is that where I want to be for a first pick though? Not particularly. I'm supposed to take the Evangel here for sure. But I don't want to. I'm going to take the Bastion of Remembrance and we're going to stick with Black Red. <laughs> uh, there have <laughs> I did this on stream today too. And in fact, it might have been in the same exact scenario where I was drafting the Red Black deck and we got past an Oracle of the Alpha. Remember, I don't take this card because it's good. I take it because it's extremely fun. The, the correct pick here is just the Urbrasks Forge. We're going to stick. You've seen me draft an Oracle of the Elf enough times. Let's take the Forge and hope that the Den of the Bugbear wheels because we have a really good start for what we're doing. At Sushi here versus Deadly Dispute. Wandering Emperor in the pack is insane. Coma's great. Vorinclex is good. I guess I could actually take the Deadly Dispute here and probably end up wheeling the Sushi. Let's do that instead. Another good pack for us. Rotting Regisaur is just a fatty. Swarm Saboteur is a nice ninjutsu early play that's kind of just annoying to the opponent. Grim Lava Mancer is solid. A Yara could be okay. Still lacking in the red-black fixing department, which is kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, I mean, 3 mana 7-6 is large. but I think I like the Swarm Saboteur here. I wouldn't be surprised if the Reggie wheels. There is Dragon Skull Summit, and that is a very easy choice here for me. There are a lot of red-black cards that are playable. Yes, you're not going to beat the fixing. Too good. Way, way, way too good there. How many early game plays do we have? We have two one-drops. 
three two drops, four three drops. I could use some more burn removal, like lightning bolt. If we could get that, would be great. You know, just things that can not only deal with a small creature, but can also go face so that we can uh, close the game after putting on a lot of early pressure, you know? Fatal push, play with fire. Bone Crusher. Yeah, we don't have that much removal right now. I guess Blood Tithe Harvester is technically a little bit of removal. Oh, speaking of, I'm going to take the Torolf's Disciple here. 3-3 three, three Haste. Whenever it attacks, you get to conjure four bolts into your library. That seems fun. Could take a one drop. Could take one of the Pyromancers. would be great. Kenra Spell Spear is still fine. I don't think it's as good in necessarily this uh, format as it is in the regular draft environment. Because in cubes, in a cube, so many cards are going to be playable and usually are going to have higher power level. Now oh, this looks good. Just a couple of like black exile effects and then some red burn spells, maybe a couple more creatures. And we'll be sitting very happy, I think. Sword of Fire and Ice. Ooh, baby. This is my favorite sword of all time. From, what, OG Mirrodin? Uh, <laughs> I guess there are some good choices here. Jadar, Misery, Shadow, Chandra, all good. But Sword of Fire and Ice is so nice. It wouldn't be nice if it didn't rhyme, right? Life of Toshiro Umazawa versus Ziatora's Proving Ground. Again, another tap land I don't really want to take. But I don't think life is like that good. Ah, another tap duel is not where I want to be. Man, that is no respect. The Evangel is such a sicko card. Maybe just not many people are playing white, or maybe not many people know the power. I mean, we're going to take Rabbit Battery here and maybe play it. I don't think the Spider Queen is all that impressive as a top end card for us, but not that I think Collective Brutality is anything good. This is much better in Vintage Cube. I'm still gonna take it here. Um, I might not end up playing it though. No respect for the Coma. Lava Mancer's good. Yeah, so we have plenty of playables going into pack three. My ideal scenario though is getting a lot more fixing that doesn't enter tapped. It would be really nice to be able to cut the Proving Ground and the Triome. I wouldn't call it a curve. That's more of a brick right now, isn't it? This isn't an exile effect, isn't it? No, it's a sacrifice. Target player sacrifices a non-token. When they do, you, dis you may discard a card and conjure a duplicate of it. Sacrifice effects are usually pretty weak. I would say. Nice, got the one drop back. All right, pack three is a go. Any black red fixing, that's a no. We have a Metamorph, which is just always fine. A Phyrexian Arena, which is pretty good card advantage for a deck like this. Yeah, I think the Arena is going to be the pick here for me. Passing two of my favorites, the Opus and the Epiphany, but what can you do? You know, I think I drafted a red-black control deck for the tubers a couple days ago, didn't I? So we get bo both versions of the red-black deck. We had like a super control red-black deck. And now we're drafting a pretty aggressive red-black deck. Once again, no fixing. Dang it, we have a Pillar of Flame and a Spike Fuel Hazard. Yikes. Best cards in this pack, Nissa and Adeline. Here I am taking a second pick Pillar of Flame. 
And it is what it is. I can beat small creatures. I cannot beat a large creature with my current uh, selection of cards. Ah, once again, no fixing. Bunch of good cards, though. Stoke the Flames, Sedgemore Witch, Burn Down the House, Kranko's okay. I like taking the Stoke here, I think. That's decent burn that can go upstairs or anywhere else that we need. I mean, we do have Reach now, right? We definitely have Reach. But if I could get... Blood Crypt, Black Cleave Cliffs, and then maybe like, I think we've already passed Vraska's Contempt, but maybe like um, Infernal Grasp or something, then I think we'd be set. No red cards, no good fixing. We have a Priest of Forgotten Gods, huh. That could be okay in our deck. It's nice with like Forge and with War Boss. But I've been really happy with the Yara's Oath Sworn. Like, if you can re uh, play this on turn two, it just gets big. And it's hard to block. I'm guessing, though, whatever one I take, I can wield the other. We're not even considering Grey Merchant. We're just not there. Let's go with the one that attacks. Conscripts could also be okay to push in. That's actually a way to push through a bigger threat. I almost like running the Conscripts over the Siege Gang Commander. Kindling Phoenix is great. Terror of the Peaks is pretty good. Phoenix over Siege Gang Commander. I think I like Phoenix over Terror of the Peaks. Come on, draft. Give me the Blood Crypt. No, not Steam Vents. Blood Crypt. Okay, this is actually an insane card that we're getting seventh pick. Crucius, Titan of the Waves. This is the nerfed version that has only one toughness, but it is still amazing. Like, if they don't kill this, it's really hard to not just go off. Twilights that we're probably not playing. Man, Epiphany and Opus are wheeling. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay, we got a good deck, though. I might just run 17 lands. Two of my lands are our cycling lands anyways. So whatever the worst cut is, or whatever the worst card is here, we're going to cut that. It might be Pillar of Flame? Overplay with fire. The pillar exiles, but for only two damage, I don't think that's generally going to be that relevant. Which wield two? Do I have enough instants and sorceries? Is that better than one of my other three drops? I don't know if it is. Which is really solid, though. Man. Somebody was eating up all my red black fixing or something. Last pick steam vents. Ugh. Why, 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 why? We ask ourselves, why, 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 why? All right, cut the pillar. 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's go. I can see this deck going easy seven wins. I can also see this deck going like three and three. I think generally this is going to be above average than what most of the opponents are going to be doing, but... We'll see. Not a bad opener. Turn one Lava Man. We got to play with Fire for a little bit of interaction. Sword and Phoenix. This just looks like a mono red hand.
You know when your opponent goes turn one Lava Mancer? It's probably going to be a quick one. Hey, we can cook the goose. Very nice. Search for Azcanta. We're going to lead on Bastion here. And then Phoenix, and then plan on going Sword Equip on turn 5. No place. Ooh, okay. Maybe we have a new game plan now. Alright. Let's go for the value. Bounce the Lava Mancer with ninjutsu. Because they can't counter ninjutsu. Uh, that's... Oh! So, I can get them here really good. If I ninjutsu now on the token that they're bouncing, um, their brazen borrower goes away forever. But I don't think that's super relevant. Because if I just let that happen, then instead I get to cast both Virus Beetle and the Grim Lava Mancer. This is probably better, right? Okay, let's just go to combat. They keep giving me beetles, I'll keep casting beetles. Growth spiral in response. Alright, more beetles it is. <laughs> Discarded and exclude counter. Feeling pretty good about our position. Apologies if some of the sound settings are a little bit messed up again. I did just get a new mic and we're... Well, most of the things should be well set, but maybe the game sounds might be a little bit low. Can't block any of those. I mean, I don't see any reason not to just keep making them discard a bunch of cards. Jessica's Chariot. So we just right click attack all, lol gg. And if there are no game sounds, I will make sure I remedy that.
That might be better. Hello. Incubation and druid. <sighs> I don't know if I'm supposed to be activating the crypt breaker all that much. Oh, they have a Myglas. So we have a really cute play here we can do. We can go Legion War Boss, right? Make a token, and then we can stoke the flame there, Myglaz, before the token has to attack. Or before our token has to attack. It's fine. Hope he is still missing land drops here. Get our arena online. Ah, they're just getting very unlucky. Okay, they finally found their third land. Oh, really? Boo. Well, with two more lands, we can uh, bring it back with Old Priest. Oh, here's a fun play we get to do if we want. To. Oh, actually, no. The better play is just to play with Fire the Druid right now. Um, I'm just going to pass. We're going to discard the Oath Sworn to the Crypt Breaker, and that'll give us a third zombie, and we can start making extra zombies. Or drawing extra cards with the zombies, rather. Nice. Now we go. Old priest kicked. Get back Shouldred. The game should end in short order from here, unless they kill Shouldred again. Conscripts, steal the beast, which we can attack with since we have Crypt Breaker. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't actually a good game, but we did win. It was more just a beatdown brown town. And 2-0. Go to our next game. Nice curve out there. All the sleeper turn one. Okay, level it up. Boundary. Hmm. So we get to ninjutsu here. Get a beetle and then replay our uh, cult conscript. I mean, they can just level us to a 3-3 if they want to, but it uses two of their manas. Oh, they are going to do that. Okay. Just pass, I guess. Oh, are we racing? Oh my gosh, Mad Lad. 
Gotcha. Sure. That makes more sense now. Let's get the Bastion online. Then we can stoke their uh, Evolve Sleeper next turn if we want to. And even do it by going... Actually, do we even want to do that? Maybe we just want to rekindling Phoenix first. Yeah, I'm just going to get the Phoenix online. Worm Coil Engine! That is a problem. Okay... Well, shoot. And they discarded Grey Merchant. That can't be good. So, what I can do here is I can block their Worm Coil Engine and then shoot my creature that I block with. Effectively turning Stoke the Flames into 7 damage. Because of the Bastion as well. Ah, the Spider Queen has reach. Send them all face. I guess just the Phoenix at face. Is this a zombie? No, it's a skeleton warrior. Oh, Worm Coil Engine is indeed a huge problem. Grim Lava Mancer is actually posing them pretty good if they can't kill it. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on up to one creature, it gains lifelink. Destroy each creature with power two or less. Jeez. Well, that's probably going to kill us. They're going to gain so much life this turn. Yeah, that should probably do her. I am merely delayed, not defeated. So they're gonna gain. They're gonna gain a casual eleven. <laughs> uh.
Yeah. All right. I mean, even zealous conscripts is not going to get us out of this one, right? No wonder they discarded Grey Merchant. Shoulder's good. So I'm going to leave the Phoenix back to block now. Ugh. Way too much life gain for us. Oh, I should have probably blocked or played the land out for conscript so I could bring it back too. That was a mistake. All right, OP, you win. You win. I got nothing. Too much. Too much. They gained infinite life that game. Not good for a red-black aggro deck to uh, fight against that. All right. GG's on to four. On the play. Hand is great. Ooh. Once again, would love to find a second black source here so we could uh, ninjutsu on turn two and replay the conscripts immediately. It's a good hand though. Pretty, pretty good hand. Come on, Swamp. No, not for you, for me. Okay. All of my cards are pretty good. I guess the Null Priest is probably the worst amongst them. Pick your poison, my friend. Pick your poison. Take the sword. Alrighty. Let's get saboteuring. Fortunately, did not find that swamp. Black, white. Chaos on a one. Uh, bad news, I did not find a land though. We might fall behind because we miss on land drops. That would be pretty unfortunate. I mean, it seems like the Machaeus on one must have been bait. Even they knew I had the Bone Crusher, right? Blade Splicer. Well, Bone Crusher wasn't killing the 3 3 anyways. Alright, land's good. I'm gonna get the Forge online here. Might not have been the swamp we wanted, but it's good enough.
I guess I'm pretty happy they took the sword from my hand since we're not hitting our land drops. Tap land pass. I'm in for that as well. Nice, did find the swamp. All right. So beetle beetle here, or do I want a bone crush plus conscript? I think we're gonna conscript plus bone crush for now. Wish this opponent would play with a little bit more haste. <laughs> I guess I should have played the Bone Crusher first since Mana Tithe is also in the format. That was a slight sequencing error, but didn't get punished for it. Ooh, Ephemerate. That's really bad. That is extremely bad for me. Okay, that's a bunch of 3 threes. I might honestly have to use Stoke the Flames on the Blade Splicer to stop them from having all that first strike. Okay, only three cards left in hand. Oh. Boy, Lyra too. Well, uh, that's a problem. We need to find a little bit more oomph for that. Sheesh. Yeah, this will be a quick loss for us. What do I have that can get out of this? On another land. Archpriest discarded, that's nice. Okay, well. And they rip an Ellis Ilkor, huh? I'm not sure how I can beat that uh, Lyra, though. Not if I use the Stoke like this, which I think I'm going to do, because I also can't beat the 3-3s. Three Ooh, that's nice. Alright, we're just dead. Good block, because now I just died to Lyra. Ugh. Well, this is not going very well for us, is it?
This is not going very well for us at all. We're two and two now. And it feels garbage, man. Good beats. Certainly I wouldn't go two and three with a deck of this caliber. <laughs> okay. You can do some things with his hand, hopefully. It doesn't have much pressure, but it's got a lot of interaction. It's a good draw, of course. Mirror match! Tenacious Underdoggy. Come on, three drop. I might be sacrificing the Cult Conscripts here end of turn, because we really would like to resolve Shouldred if possible. Fine. So now we're going to want to uh, actually just shoot the Oath Swarm because before it can get any bigger, I feel like. Forge online is really nice. Into one of our crazy four drops next turn is great. Forge is really good with cult conscripts too. It gives us a creature that can just bring it back since it dies every turn. Alright, so now the next creature they play is going to get plus three power. Interesting. Terror of the Peaks. That is a stokable creature, thankfully. And that should basically lock up that game. Not going to cut it, my friend. All right. Good, 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 good. Another win under our belt. Remember, for these cube drafts, you do need to get to five wins to get your entry fee back. So let's just do that. Let's just simply win them all. On the play. Great. Curve. All right, we'll take it. Oh, would have been better if we had that on turn one, but turn two, Oath Sworn, turn three, Forge, looking pretty good. Nice, and they're a slower deck too, so we get to take full advantage of this crazy pressure we're going to put out. This one might be over in a flash, kids. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just run shoulder out, and if they have a counter, so be it. Sure. Because if they don't, they basically just lose on the spot, so... I think it's correct. Oh, that's not good enough. Um, land wins here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, a land wins here. Untapped land, I should say. Because I can zealous my mountain and then play with fire them. So you know what? I'm actually shoot, supposed to shoot them on upkeep to scry for a land. Oh, wait, no, what am I doing? I'm silly. 
Right, because I needed to draw the land and then conscripts needed to untap the land. <laughs> I had the right idea. Wrong execution. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I had the win. It was a random win. I would have had to rip the land naturally, but I would have. Oh, they get to steal my creature and tutor with it. Oh my gosh. That's nuts. Wow. Wow. I mean, they're still dead on board, and if they don't have a sacrifice effect, then that also kills them, but... Might have thrown. Funny. That's clever. Phew! <laughs> Wow, that could have been really bad. Give him a free tutor with that? Sheesh. Okay. Four and two. Uh, funny, funny, funny. Ooh. I think on the draw, this hand is too slow to keep. I really need to do something on turn one or two. Yeah, this is much better. Oh man, Toros Disciple. That's right, that's in our deck. I'm on the draw. I'm going to pitch a land here. We have both colors. If we find one land, we can cast all of our spells. So yeah, I think that was absolutely right. Getting paid off immediately. Opponent on blue-red with ramp. They are my kind of player. Usually the uh, shoe's on the other foot here, but they're going to be the one trying to be control, and I'm going to be the one trying to beat them down, huh? Go spell for the war boss. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Please don't hurt me. That's not so bad. Six mana Chandra is bad. I think I'm supposed to just go face here. Jeez. Sure. Yeah, they took my stoke. Oh, and they have click with Narset. Oh, they should have really done that before I, uh... Wow, they gave me an opportunity there. Damn. Keep an open mind. Flames of the Firebrand or something incoming. Funny. Okay, just strike that. That's fine. Not good. Can't win this game, basically, once they resolve Shouldred. Or, rather, uh, Chandra. If they missed on their six land again, that gives us a very small chance. Wow. Sure.
There they go. I'm actually going to play this land out because I'm going to need to find um, Zealous Conscripts anyways. So they have commit with Narset now. So if they want to go Chandra minus 5 on uh, Shouldred and then commit, I will get to draw one card and they're going to draw a fresh. Okay, so they're going to keep her alive. Yep, so now they're going to go minus 2 and commit. I get to draw one. Well, that's not a bad draw. Get to finish off the Chandra at least. But obviously, we're just very dead here. Sure. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm expecting a counter here, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. GG's, GG's. See, it's normally I'm the player doing that. I'm the one wrecking these silly aggro players. Well, we only got to four wins, which isn't terrible, but I thought this deck was a lot better than that. Um, we had a lot of the best cards you would get for red-black, so... Good beats. That's the way it goes sometimes. We never got to do Crucius. Oh, actually, we never got to do the sword either. We never got to do some fun things, but in any case, appreciate y'all watching. Hopefully y'all enjoyed. I'll see you back next time for some more. Bye-bye.